when you have bluebird days like this and the sun is that bright, these fish get spooky. But today, I'm going to share with you a little tip on Flats Class YouTube that I think is going to help you, especially with spooky redfish. It's all about the contrasting jig head with the natural colored bait. That's how you fool them, and that's how you time your bait to get in front of the right fish. Stay tuned. So one of the things I get all the time is, why do you always pick such contrasting jig heads with your soft baits? And that's not really anything to do with trying to let the fish see the bait as much as it is me trying to figure out where the intercept point is when I'm sight fishing, because that's what I do most of the time is sight fish. So often I'll pick a dark bait with like a white jig head or I'll use chartreuse or pink jig heads, but that's kind of standard for me. And you're gonna see here in a few minutes what I mean by that, because I can pick up the bait and draw that line and time it just right where he's gonna come across my plastic bait and we're gonna catch a fish. That is how you catch those spooky reds is with that little Bloody Mary jerk shrimp dragging it on the bottom in the grass with a Ned rig mushroom jig head. I have been casting and casting and casting to these guys and have not been able to get them on a hard bait. And I thought by straight swimming a nice small mirrodine in a natural color, I would get these guys and I could not catch them. So I got down into the tackle box, made an adjustment and lo and behold, I get a bite on the first cast. <laughs> I didn't even get to turn the camera on before I made my cast. And this one looks like a very good representative. I was just getting ready to get on my pulling platform and I saw a couple of pushes and I was like, are those redfish coming back around this corner over here? Uh oh, I'm blowing them out everywhere. Water super skinny, tides going out. We've got conditions right now in January. This is the third day after the front, so the water's starting to warm up, but I am on the quarter moon, so I have very little tide movement today. And when you get conditions like this, these fish get super jumpy. Uh, some of the only boats in my area that are out today because the water is so low are primarily uh, what we call duck boats or mud boats, surface drive boats, and air boats. And these fish get really spooky every time they hear those things. Oh man, you just don't get opportunities like today where you have perfect light. I was out here yesterday with Captain Mike Bard from Pinellas County. He came up and spent the day with me and we struggled. We caught a few reds, but we didn't catch any in this class at all. So this is kind of nice. I come out here, basically same area. Um, fish are still be behaving really spooky. Wow. Tough bite um, yesterday. Things are getting better today and man, that's a nice fish. Let's put him back in the drink and then we'll, whoa, he's ready to go. All right, let's uh, break some more stuff down for you. All right, the way I really like to work this bait is basically just to kind of lift it over the, the shallow spots in the grass and drag it, swim it real slow, kind of glide it, let it fall back into the grass. You want it keeping contact with the grass. You don't want it up in the middle of the water column. Even as shallow as it is, there are some deeper spots. So reeling it slow and pulling it through the shallow stuff where you've got that grass that fingers up and you feel it stick a little bit, you just gotta pull through that. It's going to happen. Now, if it's too big a nuisance for you, you can always pick up the Z-Man Power Shrooms, which does have a weedless version. The only difference between this one tenth ounce and that one tenth ounce is the gauge of wire on the hook is a little heavier. But just pull that bait, swim it slow, pull that bait. As long as it's making contact with the bottom, you've got a shot at catching these spooky reds. And it's a little easier for you to see the, the in my opinion, the actual bait itself because you can keep track of it a little bit better. 
I've got this eight pound green line on here, so I know about where my line is all the time. It's almost a neon green, as you can see, so it makes it a lot easier for me to line those fish up. Oh yeah, a little group of 20 in there. Coming down the bank, I let them just right. And by having that contrasting jig head color, I'm able to time it just perfectly. And again, the Bloody Mary Sunday Jerk Shrimps does the job for me. Blends in with this bottom so well. It really does, it doesn't spook them a bit. Oh, come on, my friend. Nice fish. Nice fish. Gorgeous fish. Gorgeous water here. So lucky to be able to fish here on the nature coast. Shoot videos for you guys. Again, today's lesson is all about, it's all about choosing contrasting jig heads for sight fishing spooky, spooky reds. And I'm being really careful on my setup here. Really careful. Another gorgeous fish. And, you know, I can't say this enough. A lot of folks will look at this bait and we, like I said earlier, you look at this bait and you're like, not really a lot of motion with this bait. Well, that's the point when you're fishing with spooky for spooky fish is the fact that you don't have a lot of motion. That helps you. Release him as well. Off he goes. Gorgeous. All right, guys, this is how you do it. If you want to catch spooky fish, that contrasting color right there does a fantastic job where I can see the white moving across the bottom and I can time it right in front of the group of fish or a single fish if necessary. I'm gonna get back up here and have a little bit more fun on the pulling platform. Saw some coming up my left side here. Man, tough. There's probably a bunch right in here too. I see some dark water in there. Come on guys, someone cooperate. Big eat, big eat. That's what we want, big eat. Dragging that thing along the bottom. Just come discover it. so hard to see these fish, believe it or not, as great as the sight fishing conditions are, they glare right now because there's some haze it's making it tough. But what I'm doing is I'm reading all these surface signatures. And I know there's a group here in front of me of a few fish. There he is. Good Lord. There he is. And running at me. Oh, that is what I'm talking about, right there. Oh, man, spooky redfish. I'm showing you guys some secrets today that we used to use as redfish pros back in the day. And it is just I mean fun. I mean fun. Who needs a gulp bait when you can throw Z-Man, huh? <laughs> that bait has action when it's sitting still. I mean sitting still. Oh man, this is cool. And I am out here all by myself. I don't have one soul out here in this bay. Not a, not one person. This is nice. 
But it does work on pressured fish, I promise you guys. The reason I have my drag set so slippery on the Vanford here is I'm using a one-tenth of an ounce mushroom jig head that is super light wire. And you just can't horse the fish. Just can't do it. Just can't do it. What a beautiful fish. Again, the Bloody Mary Sunday does it for me. You get hard to have a lot of control with these guys. Got them down in the salad, but come on in here, buddy. Come on in here. Show everybody what we've done here. Oh. That's a solid fish right there. I mean, every bit of 27 inches. I mean, a chunk, a chunk. That's all there is to it, contrasting jig heads. They help you see them. guys let's break it down gear piece by piece one the z-man jerk shrimps nothing new here it's one of my favorite sight fishing baits something we've taught you to use in the past the way i rigged it this time though is i put a shrooms one tenth of an ounce ned rig uh, jig on here this is a very light wire jig you'll notice it's open it's not weedless i do that because i'm sight fishing most of the time and i find that the more I put on this bait, the tougher it is for me to believe it's an actual bait. Um, but some of you may find that the grass is problematic and you're having a tough time. You might want to upgrade to the Power Shrooms, which offers a weedless version of this same bait. Now, the key to all this is picking a color that you can see when you cast and intercept the fish itself. So this particular color is, is dark because on the back it looks basically a dark green. And I can see that white head pretty easily from the polling platform or if I was standing on a cooler on the deck of the Eldora here. I've attached this jig to about three and a half feet, that's right, a 15 pound fluorocarbon. You might say, well, shouldn't you be using a longer piece of fluorocarbon? Well, that's tricky. I don't think I need to because most of the water I'm fishing is anywhere from eight inches to about 15 inches deep. So I'm making accurate casts and I'm swimming it up in front of them and letting them find it. Some of you might find that if you put four or five feet of fluorocarbon, it may work better. The key thing is, is to use a lighter test like 15 pound. Now I've got that attached to eight pound power pro v2 now the eight pound power pro v2 gives me casting distance and in many instances if i were using a lighter ned rig setup i'd probably even drop down to six pound braid but that eight pound power pro serves me well the rod and reel setup is is something you've also seen before uh, i'm a big proponent of this absolutely brand new vanford that came out this is the vanford 3000 xg it's turning into my favorite of all the reels in the stratic type category so for me silky smooth super light uh, comfortable and a little bit more corrosion resistant quite honestly so they've done a good job of sealing this reel up now i experimented you always see me throwing zodiuses or you'll see me throwing the terramar double x on this trip i wanted to try one of the bass rods out because brian and the guys sent this to me this is the shimano x pride this is the 270 m it's a seven foot rod it's about a quarter to five eighths it does a really good job of throwing a bait about this weight because even though this is a tenth of an ounce with that big bulky four inch shrimp on there it, it is a little bit heavier than that and this rod has a lot of give so i can get a nice crisp cast a uh, great sight fishing rod and it has plenty of backbone to fight the size fish you saw today now i had to use that slippery drag today instead of just fighting it with the rod itself but i found that this this complete setup in the way that i fish these fish today 
was one way you can always tackle pressured or spooky redfish. Now, stay tuned because I want to give you some closing thoughts before we call it a day here. Learning how to catch spooky redfish, bluebird skies, high sun, crystal clear water. I mean, it was a lot of fun today. And I want to bring you along on a lot more of these trips. And all you have to do is subscribe. That's right, subscribe to Flats Class YouTube. That's all we need. You subscribe, tell your buddies, share this, and we're all going to catch more fish. Well, until next time, I'm going to have to fire up the Hells Bay Eldora and head back to the ramp. I'll see you guys on the next one.